It is 6.30. I'd like to call this uh, meeting of the Charter Review Commission to order. And would Mike please take the roll? And Robert Brent, I'm here. Uh, Scott Copley is absent. Um, Scott Guthrie. Here. Uh, Jim Humphrey. Here. Uh, Brad Mayer. Here. Ben Perra. Here. Sarah Post. Here. Uh, Michael Stevenson, President. And Ken Tracy. Here. And Ray Angel. Great, thank you. Uh, Scott sent an email. Scott Copper sent an email. He could be here tonight. Are we won't be voting on anything. And would you review the uh, emergency evacuation? Please exit to the back right here. Leave the door. Great. Uh, approval of the minutes of March 30th of 2022. Did everyone get a copy? Are there any corrections? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Share votes aye. All business. So the further discussion regarding elections terms, party affiliation ballots. Scott Copley brought up last week something about uh, switching to seven different seats on the council. And I, I said I'd check into it. Uh, I contacted the board of canvases today. Uh, they are actually meeting right now to restructure um, the, the districts because of uh, the state redistricting. So uh, hopefully um, we can get someone here next week and hopefully Scott's here. And then, you know, if they can explain if it's gonna be a real hard process or an easy process. Um, just so, so that everybody knows there's more information gathering. So. Uh, any other discussion on, on that particular uh, item? If not. So you're, yeah. you're um, talking about going from five? Five to seven. To seven. Council people. Is, are they at large seats or no. at no, districts? No, as, as districts. Okay. So the at -large, I agree with that better more than the at large. Yes. So we spoke last week about the at large, and it just seemed like it's fruitless uh, because the, the, it's hard enough to get people to run for yeah a council seat, uh, an at large seat, whether it be split halfway across the town by population or you know all the way across the town. It just seemed to be a daunting task for someone to run for that seat. It almost makes it impossible. It's, so, it'd be it, just as bad as you running for your know, house seat. Yeah, exactly. Probably, you know, probably bigger. Yeah. So <laughs> the town, the town is a big town, sixty-five square miles. So, um, section fifteen twenty, amendment of the charter. We had some discussion on that last week too. Uh, is there any more input from um, our discussion last week? Just okay. We were talking about the last line of the first paragraph. Is that eliminating uh, that? Uh, yeah, each recommendation of the committee upon approval of the majority vote of the town, uh, town council shall be placed on the, the ballot. But that seems to be somewhat in, contra in uh, contradiction with the last line of the third paragraph, which says the town council shall approve the statement of the question as it shall appear on the ballot. And I'm just wondering if perhaps that's limiting what they can do as far as whether or not we can put things directly. Right. So we were talking about um, having both our recommendations for charter changes mm -hmm. um, be titled under us. So it would be sponsored by the charter review and then the councils, what, what they sponsored, sponsored by the council, which is what Westerly did, I think. So what section is that? 15-20. And there were some other things that I think that we talked about, uh, and that was, well, it's it not amendment, I think it was who, who could serve on it. There was like, they, they try, you know, they, now it's making it, it, it harder and harder. too restrictive, yeah. because it says, like, no town employees in any capacity, I think, is one of them. Yeah. Um, well, the other ones just kind of made it hard for anybody to be on it, right? You know, you can't serve twice, and you can't be an elected official, and and all these different things. And, and it took us a while to get to nine people. Uh, I think so. it's one thing to say no elective, elected officials of the town. I can understand not wanting to have those people on this or like the like high level department chairs. I can understand that, right. but just 
you know, if you're a clerk in one of the elementary schools, I don't see why you shouldn't be barred from being on this. I agree. So the first, the, the first paragraph in 1972 is probably better written than what was changed. Can you read that? Um, you want me to read it? Could you? I don't have it in front of me. The council shall within two years after adoption of this charter and every fifth year thereafter, or more often if it is deemed necessary, appoint a committee of nine members to review this charter. Said committee shall within six months to its appointment submit to the council a report with its recommendations for amendments, additions, or deletions. That's that's it. Is that is that the same language that there's more that there's, was added? So right now we have no member of said committee shall be an elected or appointed official or an employee of the town or of any department, office, or agency of the town. So basically, if you are in any way affiliated with this town if you're, you're the the town. employee of this town if you're you can't be it doesn't specify what right right so i have a question then so the council appoints the department heads or so where where could you switch the language the, to like eliminate to eliminate people obviously people who are elected shouldn't be on it or um well, the manager said last or the, you know, last week or the week before that he didn't think it was a bad idea having an employee on it because no, I have a lot of I, I agree but, that employees should be on it, but like, where do you differentiate like um, someone maybe who's appointed by the council versus someone who's a clerk at the school? So how do you? Right. So, so when it says uh, anyone in, in elective office, is it anyone in elective office, or is it limited to? It, it just seems it just elected seems to, or appointed official or an employee of the town. Yeah. So any elected official of the town. So they should just say elected or appointed. Yeah. And after that, and then after that, that out. just strike the or an employee of the yeah, town. Yeah, that might be the way to do it. So you leave your elected your and your appointed officials. Because right. I can understand the conflict of elected officials, and I can even understand the conflict of appointed officials if they're appointed by the council, but not. Just a regular yeah. employee. And we'll debate there's probably some employees that are pretty knowledgeable. That of course. That so would be yeah. very useful to have their information. Yeah, ben, didn't absolutely. you say that last week? Something about you were talking about um, uh, people that are allowed to serve on mm -hmm. the charter review, and it, it kind of like makes it harder to get on it, <laughs> so to speak. You can't be this, you can't be that, you can't be this, you can't be that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I you think... had mentioned something about there are. You, there are people that do have a lot of knowledge in the town that could probably help on it. So, so you weren't even opposed to having a town employee be on. Be yeah. on. I, th I think the only concern is like you would for any position, town council or other, if there's a conflict of personal interest, mm -hmm. that would have to be disclosed, stated. <clears throat> there's the, the Rhode Island Ethics, Ethics Commission, Commission yeah. has a whole outline for how to do that. But um, Maybe we I, should put I wouldn't I wouldn't want to have like the entire committee be made up of employees. Right. 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 But that would look bad. But if one or two members of the commission happen to be a town employee, that shouldn't disqualify them. No, actually it might make them more invested. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we could actually break that. And um Bob was saying he was talking about eliminating the last. The last sentence of the third paragraph. First, first paragraph. Oh, excuse paragraph. me, first paragraph. Which I don't think was I'm in looking the 72. At, I'm looking at the 1972. The, so. the current one, the last line of the first paragraph says, each recommendation of the committee, comma, upon approval of a majority vote of the council, town council, comma, and that's the middle section that we're looking to eliminate, it shall be placed upon the ballot. That's what we're looking at. Okay, striking that. On approval of a majority vote of the town council. So just be each recommendation of the committee shall be placed upon the ballot. Okay. I think that also provides more incentive for people to be on to want to be on the committee, knowing that yeah. their voice can definitely be heard. Because mm -hmm. there is a chance we could spend months doing this and nothing makes it right. valid. Yeah. Right. And that's happened in the past. Yeah, yeah. It's, it has. happened in the last charter review, which then was the incentive to so that that's kind of like the, um, the last paragraph, I mean the last sentence in paragraph three. The council shall approve the statement of the question out as it shall appear on the ballot. Basically, yeah. it's that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that just got moved from one section uh, or from one paragraph and incorporated into another. From and it's still in this one. 
in the most recent yeah, yeah that's that's uh, maybe we should consider putting something in there that 20 that allows people to be on it without without being inconsistent yeah. with the, the, the ethics right. side of it yes about the, the third paragraph the last line i don't know i'm going off of questions for that that just has to do with the language so mm -hmm. they will have already approved what you all recommend so that's just a language thing that they that they shall approve the language that's going to be written. So I don't know that it's in conflict. Is that, that amended? Is that amended language? That um, not that section. Oh, not that section. No. Oh, I see your point. Whether or not it's in conflict. Does that define what they can do? I think it just defines the, with the recommendation. They can, approve, recommendation. they can approve the language, but they can't not double negative. Sorry. They can't not approve what you people put before them. If that, if you take out that line in the third, in the first paragraph, the last line. Okay. So they get the wordsmith, but they don't get to not put it on there. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> and we also determined that there was no barrier to them putting a question on by themselves. That was, by themselves that was yeah. not <clears throat> which opposition to whatever is recommended. Which, which yeah. they did in the last. Um, the last one and last two times. Last two times. At least the last two. They times. passed their own and put it in there. Yeah. The, so, bu the budget referendum was the town council's right. creation. Right. Was there a charter commission no. in place then? No. So essentially, what, what we would have is we take that line out is the town council can affect the wording. Town council can put their own amendment in there, but our amendment also has our. Amendment suggestion has to be in there, so they have the ability. In either case, yeah. it goes before the voter, which is where it should go. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we still have the provision that says if you know they want to put a contradictory right question they, on there, right, and then you can still go. Which, yep, yeah, you can put them both, or they can both be approved, and whichever gets more prevails. Right. It shouldn't be a political obstacle to you know ask other people a question. So. What we're saying too is so if you strike that part of the last sentence in the first paragraph, but you still have that sentence in the last sentence in the third paragraph, where they can change the, lang the language of yeah. the question. Mm -hmm. We're talking about retaining that. Yeah. That they can change the language of a question. So the town council shall approve well, the, well, I think it's on the a, ballot. Well, Let's say we want to put a summary. They want to put the whole text. Right. <laughs> which, which, Fine. which they don't do anymore because right. the last charter review, they said you don't, don't have, have to do that, that anymore. But as long as, again, the, as long as the language maintains the scope and the text. Yeah, exactly. That's, right. What if they take it totally rework? What you just said we should have in there then, because if it just all it says is the town council shall approve the statement of the question, that pretty broad brush. Yeah. I think what you just said is a sentence we could add in there and make it yeah. retain the retain. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Um, above that, it says, which substantially expresses the purpose or identifies the subject. Oh, matter. So I don't think that they can change it that much. Okay. Right. That would be the argument. Yeah. Right. Yep. And what we're thinking of doing is amending it to, to make sure that what this commission or the you know, future commissions do uh, goes directly to the ballot. Yep. And then, you know, it, it will just, it will simply say that that this is a recommendation from the charter committee. We didn't need, you know, council approval. So mm -hmm. we'll have to work on that a little bit more, I think. All right. <clears throat> Good. Okay. 801, financial provisions again. Any more discussion on that? Because I think Bob's ready to send something over there. Well, there's been a lot of work done, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and I have one more question, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, on the agenda for Monday night's uh, town council meeting, uh, last week, it says last week or this? that that said that there was going to be an update for the council. Was that this past week or next week's meeting? He did an update last week. I gave the update. You, you did do an update. Yes. Yeah, I gave that update. I just said that you're working on it and that <clears throat> you're making progress and that you Tune in. plan to give update, an update them to here the council every now and then to get their input. To, to see if we can I agree to the the web page and the survey questions and 
Okay, good, good. Oh, Office of Personnel and Records. I think that's over and done with. Is it not, Ben? Well, then we come to the conclusion that you're the director of yes, something. Yes, we did. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Jim has something. We, we skipped over finance provisions. A, a lot of work has been done. Yeah. Um, I know Brad did a lot of work on timeline. Ben did some work on timeline. Had a couple of ideas. And then I am absorbing lots of information on this, too. And I actually dared to kind of use my Amazon. Pass them out. It looks like you there's a lot of a lot of so I think that's been shared. This is the one thing that's not been shared, which I have copies of. Okay. I kind of took a my Amazon project prototyping work where they kind of work backwards. In other words, and it's a good a good thing to think about. A lot of these ideas are good to say, how would you market that? What would be your commercial? What's your tagline? Mm -hmm. You know, and when you lay that out, you go before you flush out every detail, many details, something it's a good way to be thinking about it. So I took a stab at what might be the ballot questions for what we think is there's timeline, there's some details, but more importantly, injecting the idea of two petition opportunities for the public mm -hmm. to have improved input into the budget one process. One in the workshop stage and one after, one, one after adoption. adoption. One, yeah. one after the public hearings, that's uh, being done. And then after a final approved town council budget, a referendum petition. That's the like 200 signature kind of thing. So I just took a crack at it. You guys, we don't, I'll just hand these out. Um, I think everybody has everything else that Brad and Ben's done, right? But it's funny, as I looked at it a moment ago, I even found something else that I was missing. I think I have 10 copies here. Do you have one? I know I gave mine away. I've got, I've got one. I think Brad needs one. You've got one more. Yeah, I got one more. Thank you. Thank you. Kept moving. Okay, got it. So it's essentially, wait, I really, what I, one thing I learned how hard it is to write these things. <laughs> 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 I spent like two hours staring at two paragraphs. Um, but I was trying to mimic what, what's been done in other towns without. And that's going to be a big question for us too is to. We have to write, we saw the entire detail strike out, strike through, but my, I'm hoping something we talked about, what is the intent of this? And if there is nothing here, so somebody could vote on it. To simplify the line. To simplify it, it's selling it up to be a bit, bit wordy. So essentially, and with the title being really important, back to my, my theme, improve public input to the budget decision process. That's what I came up with. Could be a million other things. I think that's really appealing too, Jim. I mean, right away you think you would want to want to vote for this. Right. Then you read into it. And it's important with all the conversations that we had, the number of signatures we need to talk about that for the petition, so people understand what a petition is to change or add budget line items shall be reviewed and taken into consideration. These are taken into consideration by the town council. And I was looking at South Kingstown. I printed out. I think I, I think I did share that their ad for the budget process and their explanation of what it is and when it is that you can petition the town council after their budget hearings and actually looked at one of the town council meetings when yep they went through like four or five petitions voted maybe yes on one and no on a few others it was just taken into consideration one they actually liked and then the second thing is okay, those are taken into account there's ultimately a final town council budget no, approved by the town council yeah it happens every once in a while well last week that same noise was going on it was at the whole meeting and and it, it disrupted people that were watching yeah, hit this yeah. mic. <clears throat> i was watching it on youtube and i'm going what the heck is that yeah. i can't hear anything so hopefully when we open the public content oh, uh, see my last, we'll ask uh, anybody out there if they're hearing any background noise like the last time. yeah yeah, let's see if we can't address it. Good point. And yeah, so go ahead. And so part, you know, part B is the uh, the um, town council final to budget detailed referendum petition. Two hundred signatures of verified electors can add or subtract a minimum of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I said or zero point zero two percent. You know, my my theme. I'm trying to get away from hard numbers. Right. Whichever is larger, 
using the, I looked at your budget document then as a denominator to the final town council budget to either, either the municipal capital or school budget. I noticed other towns didn't really touch the school department budget on the earlier petitions that kind of focused on the uh, municipal budget. Because schools can't be funded less than right. what they were the previous. Because it's restricted. To the state. Kelly, you bottom line it. So that's really what I, I took a, ch a uh, shot at. I think it's ultimately something we're going to flesh out. There's a lot of work on, on timeline and some of the other details. And e even this process, you know, I was talking with Ben, there might be one or two things we can, they may be a second question. Because I know, Ben, you had a couple of ideas as well, if you want to talk about that. Uh, 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 this is uh, uh, I got three letters. Uh, two Ben's are over there. Three letters begin with a P. Get my backwards all the time. <laughs> You're too easy going. <laughs> Higher that can be. Yeah, I hear you. Um, one of the things we're talking about, you know, looking at Brad's document as well, is this um, separation of where it becomes a development and development process and when it becomes public input. I think that pretty much was the uh, point on Brad's uh, document here, the fourth Monday of February. Uh, following that, on yeah, the first Monday of March, at, at the advertisement of the public hearing, which is really the first time it goes out to anybody yeah. that's not involved in the actual development process <laughs> gets to see it. So, does that make sense? That's where you get to basically see this is where we're at right now. This is yeah, we're planning all, we're all this is background, yeah. and I really don't care what the timetable is on that because you guys know a lot more about it than I do. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, Brad, you just back. Dated everything. Yeah, I, I like picked the thing. first week of June and then I tried to keep in the same breaks. And like, I did that for this year's budget process. And the budget I presented Monday night was like two weeks or a month ahead of last year's. So we're like way early. And that has been problematic already. And this puts it even earlier than that because we don't have numbers from the state. We, right, I was we, I've been we thinking really about can't that. Get yeah. there for a complete budget in that time frame, and so uh, as long as this isn't going into the charter, uh, no, no, we no. have flexibility. We we have yeah. to manage around. Right, it's, it's kind of but, kind of where does it become a public? Like project? I think the only hard date was in the uh, charter, the financial town meeting and referendum. I don't think there are any other. Like so, there's a couple of things. Uh, in addition to that, uh, about the location of where the uh, financial town meeting takes place, it specifies the high school auditorium, and like it's not necessarily available this year. They've got things going on, so I think we're set for the financial town meeting, but we couldn't use it as a polling place. So again, the charter getting too specific creates its own problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the budget calendar is that by ordinance. No, it's not. contract. You're talking about. I go to the budget calendar. So this, what what Brad is showing us is like a sample budget calendar. Yeah, and maybe some of the wording that's in here can be melded with what's presently written down, in case there's anything in here that helps you, um, of course, as you move forward. So, right. how much time do we need from <laughs> if there is going to be a final referendum? How much time needs to be from when the town council makes their quote unquote final approval to then have a referendum? Before the beginning of the fiscal next fiscal year. No, so <clears throat> actually there we have specific advertising requirements. Yeah, yeah so two weeks when, before <clears throat> two weeks before the public hearing. Yeah. No, from, from, and then two weeks you need to advertise before the financial town meeting too, right? Before the referendum as well, because you have to have your uh, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, the financial town meeting referendum, I think are always advertised at the same time. Two weeks ahead. They're, yeah, they're so basically tomorrow. if this bumped it out the way I did it, yeah. which is subject to whatever, we it pushes everything back like early, like I like three weeks or so. Because I, I, I just factored in three weeks for the petition process and validation of signatures. Because I'm thinking if we're going to set a date, I think because then they the can. referendum, the only if there isn't a referendum, that's going to be the last thing that after it, it's done. Yeah. So like I'm thinking 
we should say that should be like right at the end of June. So that way you actually have as much time as possible to work on it, but you know that by the end of June, a budget will be adopted for the next fiscal year. I just didn't know if it's, if it's supposed to be, I don't, I don't, I don't know, this might, Ben, this might be an answer for you. Would it be preferable to be beginning of June so that there's time to print out the new taxes and send them out so that yeah, it starts yeah. coming in before, before June, July? Or like, yeah, how I much mean, does that matter? We want to have the budget passed before July and um, the property tax bills don't go out in July. Okay. Uh, so we're okay there. Um, the end of July. <clears throat> end of July, yeah. Because they're due for the beginning of August. But yeah, your tax assessor needs to set the tax. We, yeah, we, do, we need to be able to have everything set and ready to go. And um, if there was an alternative budget for the voters to consider, that budget would need to be advertised. And um, I don't know if it would be necessarily have to be a financial town meeting or a public hearing, but <clears throat> it would seem appropriate to give the public an opportunity to speak to that alternative before they vote on it. Um, the yeah, so there would be time. So we'd have to wait for the petition process and then the validation of signatures before they could even post before you could uh, advertise, advertise for the. So, so it would push it back and. I mean, if you had, let's say, worst case scenario, you have the election on June 30, up or down, it's going to be one or the other, um, knowing in advance that it's either going to be tax um, levy A or tax levy B, it could be ready to go, but it won't be an up or down, it'll be the <clears throat> board, right, if this passes, correct, right. Is that something that maybe when we draft this, we can do something instead of saying the all day referendum has to be the Thursday following the first Tuesday, if we just put language that says on a date no later than June 15th. Yeah. That way it gives flexibility. I know sometimes you'll run into like the referendums falling on the same day as high school graduation or, you know, it gives it gives the yeah. town some flexibility with that. Is that yeah that would give you yeah it gives us more more options to i mean the later we push it out the we don't have to start processes early so that might be a question if you don't mind asking the tax assessor like what's their do or die date kind of thing where they would feel comfortable knowing this is our budget so now i can do with it what yeah um it's on, it's on the last day of the, of the previous year i know the fiscal that year is july 1st it starts but i don't know i remember last year um as we got down to the final budget and there were tweaks where they wanted to budget for a tax increase of 2.99 percent mm -hmm. now with all the fluctuations and assessments and valuations and new properties coming on and coming off every month, that's a moving target. And it was causing a great deal of anxiety and stress that the tax assessor had to hit this number. It's like on a given day, we can hit the number, but it, it, it'll just be the number for that day. But the next day it could inch up a little higher or be a little lower. And so, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, that the levy and the tax is based on the last day of the previous year's assessment. So the last day of December, whatever the assessment, the yeah, town assessment that is, is, that, is right. that that is what the tax rate is set on. So any other um, properties that are added? Um, well, they, they I think just, they were they working six months behind last June, yeah, <laughs> trying yeah. to get the December numbers in, yeah. right. And so... Having the, I mean, the, this, the staffing has been inadequate for years and there's been, there's been a lot of turnover in the tax assessor's position and every prior tax assessor had a different approach, different method, and the new tax assessor could not make it understandable. So <clears throat> hopefully with stability, we'll get on top of that and we'll be in a diff different position this year and next year. Okay. But that is a concern that I, you know. You asked, can the assessor do it by this date? I Doesn't matter know, because they're taxing on last year's evaluation. <clears throat> yeah. So it's 
you know, the only thing that would happen after that is things would be more positive if somebody builds a house, it just adds to the tax base or a business moves in, adds to the tax base. But the, the levy and the rate are set from December 31st of the previous year. I mean, in theory, it's just a matter of punching in the final budget number. It should yeah. be. They don't set the levy and the rate until after the budget's approved, right. yeah. but they it is based on December 30th or 31st evaluations. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, that's the, the 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 other dynamic is they were still changing the budget and trying right. to hit specific numbers, and right. then you have to run it. It took three hours to run the calculation through the program we have, and the program kept kept crashing, so it would kick them out every time someone else logged in. So that that was also a headache, but yeah. challenge for sure. All right. Okay. So if we're looking at time period from the time that the public hearings take place the two public hearings one of the things that came up are they going to be two public hearings on the entire budget or we want to split them out one for the town one for the school i know that in that 2020 town council meeting that that was something that was being brought out by him so so the manager puts the budget together mm -hmm. that includes municipal and school and it's, and it's put together and it's done, right? Mm -hmm. And there's an increase of across the board to 199. Is that what you said? That was last year. Oh, that's the current year budget. Uh, on Monday night, I proposed a tax levy increase of 2.75 for this year's proposal. Um, the school came in asking for 6.6% in additional funds. Uh, we can't afford that. I rolled them back to 3.07. Um, and <clears throat> effectually they're gonna get a lot less because I put a good portion of that percentage into the state mandated required maintenance, which they had not been budgeting for and did not include in their proposal, but it's state law. So I can't recommend anything that's against state law, mm -hmm. but it leaves them with a very marginal increase in this year's proposed budget that <clears throat> we have asked them for more justification and information about what their needs are. Uh, and so there, that commute, that conversation is ongoing. Okay. In the budget workshop with the school, is that for, I'm just kind of curious, is that more from the town's perspective as the school is a department and we're, or is it like just the school department and we're trying to figure out how they get to their numbers? That's a, that's a really good question because they are structured organizationally under the charter as a department of the town. And even though the school committee votes on their proposal and they present it to the town council, it's ultimately the town manager who's gonna take their budget as input, as advice, and I make my own independent recommendation, which is what the town council is going to work with before they vote on their recommendation to the public. So, and then we had an issue, this came up in the audit this year about last year's budget number. Their starting budget figure was different than our starting budget figure because they were going off of, of what the school committee approved. We were going off what the voters and the council approved. So then it's like, well, which one prevails? Well, the one that the voters voted on is the valid one. Mm -hmm but there's some pushback as to, well, that's not what we had voted on. Well, their authority doesn't extend so far. But that's kind of a historical um, tension between the school and the town in terms of governance and who has the authority and who works for who, and they have needs. and. Absolutely, but they will also turn around and say that they are not accountable to the town for how they spend their money. The Title 16 gives them that, that freedom to the town appropriates but cannot tell them how to spend it. I, I was on a call today with the Auditor General and I asked the question, well, is there a consequence or, is, or what is supposed to happen if a municipality, a town, or a school overspends their budget without getting a supplemental appropriation or approval? Is it is it lawful to violate the budget that the voters approved? And I didn't really get an answer. <laughs> so 
difficult question. All right. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking in terms of the timeline, the ideas of adding two petitions. I was looking at this, looking at what you guys had done. We can make it work. I mean, bottom line is we certainly yeah. certainly can make it work. And and I think it's important too, even even this, this example of what that ballot question might be looking like. I just want, you know, it, it does two things. The referendum's not just up and down and we're gonna just have it. It's gotta be a well thought out petition that is pushed out. And you brought up a great question because the other towns, they don't have they don't have a review of those petitions. They just accept them and put them on the ballot, it seems. But you make a good point. Somebody, how do you, how does a voter digest those? Just like the town budget, they should have a, a way to digest those as well. And a lot of our thinking was, we don't need that FTM, which is just an informational session now before the referendum, but maybe something like that needs to exist so that if there are petitions, it would be a petition review. You know, they might need that because they already have public hearings to review the budget. It might right. be a great idea to have that because then it's here's petition A and B or C. You know, from a practical standpoint, I don't know who would present the petitions. Yeah. Uh, because it wouldn't quite be right for me to represent. Right. It's some, it's, it's a in elector. opposition to my recommendation or whatever the town council passed. Uh, so maybe it's just the advertisement is sufficient and the information is out there. That is what the other towns do. Now, are we going to go with they have to on the the larger petitions after the adoption of the budget? Were we going to put in there that the petition has to say where the money is being cut or added to, or are they just putting in a blanket reduced by this? Yep, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's an addition or a reduction. And I think it was just basically town, school, or I guess capital, but right. correct, but and not and it's either or. It has to right. be targeted. So, so like, somewhat. would it would it be too cumbersome if there are positions presented, like at the if the financial town meeting still went on as an explanation of each diff, different budget? Could you say, okay, this position <laughs> is this was passed and validated. This is what's going to be cut or added. But could that be part of while they're explaining it, or would that not be I, something to do? I thought it was more to the top. So it's like I want to add two hundred fifty thousand to the school budget. Not I want to add two hundred fifty thousand to the school budget for this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they can't do that. Okay. If you, well, I know we can't do it for the schools. Or, we can't. Do yeah. It. Or the or. Like the school, or, you or can't. The yeah. I, I want to add two hundred fifty thousand to the municipal budget to go to the parks department. I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Right. You that's, can't, but I can just say add to the under fifty thousand to the municipal budget. And here's what's I don't up. know why anyone would petition to do that though, unless it could be for a specific purpose. Well, we've had that in the past where people wanted to <laughs> add two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the school budget for football. All right. Can't do that. Well, because you, you can't tell the school committee how, how to spend their money, right. but That's you right. could say, unless it's for capital improvements. I, I think the the town needs to put two hundred fifty thousand more into roads, and we want it just to go to roads. Then that could be done. This is a good question. I mean, it's okay. very very general in South Kingstown. I mean, this is what they have in their ad. There's more details in their charter. I think uh, following final approval of the budget by the town council, any qualified elector of the town may circulate a petition requesting that a referendum be held on the appropriation for the general fund or the school fund in the budget as approved. Such petition may propose a reduction or increase in the total appropriation for said funds. That's it. And that's it. So they can't hear mark it. Yeah, yeah for that. We'll do a little homework, yeah. homework on this. Yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. deserves that. But but wouldn't there be uh, an idea of what where the public wants to go? Uh, there has to say, be a reason after, why. Say this passes, and then and then the public has input in the workshop. <laughs> wouldn't that, that be an idea of of you know where funding people want it to go? Because you can be sure that if they want it that bad, that they're going to go out and they're going to campaign and get. I, I mean, what if what if the school department isn't happy with the appropriation that's been proposed? And so they get a bunch of parents, teachers, and staff to go sign a petition because mm -hmm. they want an additional 500,000 to be appropriated to the schools. 
and you know well, when you think about that I mean, we always talk about the infamous ftm right where mm -hmm. but that's exactly what happened at the beginning of the meeting it was approved and voted and there was a lot of people there to increase the school budget and it it did get done mm -hmm. this would create a petition process to do potentially a similar thing right only it wouldn't be one final budget up or down you'd have an alternative a or B. either or correct which the, I think the approved is a town council budget factor for the, right. the one of the drawbacks I heard about the financial town meeting was it was a, a war of attrition. Whoever could stay till two or three a.m. <laughs> would ultimately prevail. You got the that people right. that left early were just out. the vote passes. All right, I'm out of here. The school budget was done first in that case, and all the proponents all left after the school budget was yeah. done. And, and I just want to repeat again too, not only this will improve public input that is that is the goal and it's what we've all been talking about but it the referendum may or may not happen depending upon the effort put in to get signatures and and write those petitions up and two we were thinking that that what is a giant informational ftm might not be necessary which would be i think would be a good thing because mm -hmm. there are workshops and public hearings that are well advertised so and we started doing two public hearings last year for the first time. That wasn't done that way before. And we're doing two this year because that's what I did last year. But I really don't think it's necessary to have more than one public hearing. Uh, the only reason we went to two days was so that we could give working folks an option to come on a Saturday morning at 10 instead. Mm -hmm. And no one came. Oh, really? That's it. Other towns do the same thing. And my opinion is that because we have all these recorded online and available, if you missed it, you can listen to it. You can get the information. That's and you point. can still come to a, a any town council meeting and speak under public comment if you want to have another chance. That's a good point. I think a lot of towns do do the two public hearings. However, I don't think you need... I think it'd be nice to have a second if needed kind of thing so that way like if at the end of the first public hearing someone comes out with you need to cut this you need to add that the council is like trying to gather more information to make an informed decision on what people are asking for then they could have the safety net the second meeting if they need it if they get everything done in the first public hearing then hmm. leave it there it's an interesting idea it's, it's optional. Well, yeah. in this case, I like it for the, the petition. If there if there is an alternative, right, there's a, a second bite at the apple to have, speak your mind. Yeah, I just know my my thing a couple of years ago was like the whole cut process while it's going on until you say this is what we're approving, this is what we're planning to send to the voters. Everything before that, I just kind of just seems I don't want to say irrelevant, but it's like until I see this is what your plan is. I think that's when you get people who want to speak out if they really disagree about it. So I like this that we're basically like, this is our plan, and then you have the small petitions that if you really say, "Hold on, we I think there's something you need to reconsider here," and then still go that way. But this proposal is is similar to what the council president um, put up in the town council uh, as her own amendment to the charge. It's very similar, yes, and and it never got seconded. Correct. So, so I'm thinking that that's probably what she would like to do <laughs> because it kind of it kind of like does the same thing that she wanted to do, although the numbers I think were a little bit different, but um, it's the same concepts because I read her. Let's proposal. do some pros and cons on this and let's send something to them to let them know that we're trying to get something to them to help them get a budget passed mm -hmm. because we don't need any more no's because it's just it's all it does is cost us money and hold us back yes yes so um let's study jim's uh question or these questions here um and you said you worked hard and you and uh you're trying to look for corrections and you stayed at two paragraphs for hours my brother-in-law once told me if you want to know that there's a mistake in what you've written read it backwards there you go you, you know I, I had suggested um a subcommittee for this work and i mean i'm just thinking you know ben and i have spoken bob. Do, bob we've actually met you, you, too, you, you sure you, john that's fine <laughs> <laughs> it's going to jim, jim thorpe yeah, jim <laughs> thorpe good lord it's not, it's not good but I, I know you worked on it a lot too brad i know ted's I was thinking maybe the four of us 
anybody else wants to be part of this, but I'm just thinking, I was just thinking too, just the concept, the concept of two petition, maybe refine it a little bit, is something maybe we can at least vote on as a group saying we want to do this. That because otherwise we're just fine-tuning it. Mm -hmm. We're fine-tuning timeline, things that are, are chart need to be in the charter. Not everything needs to be in the charter. I feel like I feel like in our next meeting we could we could vote on that. Yeah. I Does agree. everybody agree with that? I think yeah. we I, I'll refine that. We'll, I'll, we'll reach out to you guys. Does that make sense? Through with ben. everybody? Yeah. Through Ben. To Bob, Ben, Jim, whatever your name is. And uh, yeah, through Ben. Yeah, through Ben. So because I think yeah. what you said we could work one on one, which we did. Mm -hmm. But I think when we expand it, we've got to work through Ben to yeah. do that. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'll reach out to you guys. Through Ben. Oh, perfect. That won't reply all. Okay, and not require. <laughs> I've been good about not doing it. Okay, as far as the pros and okay. cons, you come up with any cons on it because we do have a list of some pros. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay, what would shoot this down? What what is what are the disadvantages of trying to do this? I can't think of any because um, nothing is happening because it's this you know the political will to do things out there right now is, is practically not there. And every everything that has to do with government, people really don't want to be a part of. Um, it, it changes the way you have always done things. Yeah. Well, that's, right. that's, 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 that's the, the status work. quo. Well, we did do that too, <laughs> just recently. So we've done it once already, basically. And in the end, the people could say no. So let's try to make it so that they'll say yes, right. and make it easier for them to be part of the budget process, which this will do. Because what's going to be key with this petition process, we have to frame it and advertise it and make it easy, easy, easy to do it. But at the same time, you have to put some thought into it. You have to get signatures. We're just talking about how many signatures, 15. I mean, it can't just be a household deciding to do a petition. It should be at least a couple of neighbors, maybe. And then with the larger thing, it's certainly you need a, a, a decent number of signatures. Yeah. The COVID issue over the last couple of years hasn't helped matters either. No. Sure, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that would really undermine this for sure. But you know, the idea of, of the small petition is that if you're serious enough about it, you're going to get the 15 signatures. Yes. Yeah. You know, so every suggestion that goes to the town council for consideration is you know that the person is serious about it and has other people that are interested in the same thing. And I think that in and of itself tells a lot to the town council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the experience talking with uh, South Kingston was it was helpful to the town council. They got earmarked, very targeted feedback on specific things in general. Mm -hmm. I think one, one of them was they wanted to add $1,000 so that uh, one of the commissions could do like some additional research or something like that. And one was that big, one was a little larger than that. So we'll try to get, again, try to reach out and get more experience in these towns, how, how that's been working. There's a bunch of other towns that do do petitions. Do you have the language from South Kingstown as to how they worded this in their charter? We do, yeah, um, we do. We have that. I, I thought you guys might have passed out at some point. The only advice that I think I would give is when we offer this as a charter change, even though this timeline is fantastic and I think it's good because it shows, you know, how everything works. I think the charter itself should just be a little bit more general oh, where yeah. it should say like you need to hold or the manager has to um, get his budget to council by, you know, such and such a date. There will be two public hearings, but not like on this yeah. day and that not day on this or day or that day, like just kind of just generic generic as generic as possible just to give some leniency and because leave, if things leave, change over the years and leave the work session and scheduling process to, to the town council through ordinance yeah i never meant this to exactly. be folded into the charter this was yeah. just right. a sample of what it might look like right in the see, future. It, see how it would work because yeah. you've got to you have to it's more time it has right. to have to after a certain point you have to have x number of days to do the smaller petitions they got to be verified the signatures it's work for the town right. and then the other one you have to have x more number of days to really get we had this conversation you have a fair amount of time to get 
200 signatures. I think this is great to present to council just to kind of give them a realistic timeline of how it would work. Yeah, it's a but, concept. Right. Um, but I think that, you know, when it comes time to revise the charter, hopefully, so this, we should try when, to keep it. When we send an update over, perhaps this stuff should go with it. I, I think and each and each council person can look at it and, and weigh in. Right. And and maybe they have something that they can share back with us. Yeah, we can have like a conceptual timeline for next year. Yeah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I because I do think that this helps understand the process that we're trying to present. Right. Okay. Can I ask one question? Yes. On the, the um, sample that you did, uh, which is good, but it's great. But um that's that's a personal comment. But um great. I'm just gonna write that in the minutes. <laughs> it says that the last like petitioners want three business days from I guess my thought is from when. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's not here yet. And this that's a really good point because I think the thinking was uh, that's exactly what we need to be hearing is it has to have happen after but the intent, at least what I'm seeing, other you know, the A occurs after the um, but the public hearings, and B occurs after the town council finalizes and approves a budget that's you know available. Just the language about triggering dates for the commitments. triggers exactly right. Yeah, trigger dates. They're not dates; they're just the sequence of events. Yeah, yeah. yeah. events. That's excellent. Thanks. Anything further on? on, on um, in in your presentation, the B, mm -hmm. where it's 200 signatures to either add or subtract a minimum mm -hmm. of 250000 <clears throat> is $250,000 added to a budget enough to get it over what you can increase your budget by by it law. depends if we're already at four percent yeah that's oh yeah we had talked about that we were going to say it cannot go yeah, above four percent it cannot go it can't, go, it can't go below the previous year's budget well it, or just so professionally if, if you were to take the town's overall budget proposal of 114 million this year and say you have to knock off 250,000 it's gonna have to if if it's going to reduce the school below their amount, which in, in this year it would, um, it would have to come off the town side necessarily. It and you also put in 2%, uh, whichever is greater. So, yeah, and, and that's, in, that's, more, that's more of a yeah. triggering for the minimum. You're right. You're right. But maybe, maybe something that just says provided such increase or decrease does not conflict with state, state law. required state yeah. laws. Yeah. So the statement will handle it. Yeah. Something mm -hmm. like to that effect. I you know, brought things up about state law and all law of that. Well, that, is that sometimes on past. Yeah. So. And that's I didn't a, call you Ben. And, and that's the trick with these things too. You, these things keep coming up. How much does the public need to know? Yeah, I'm pretty you know. sure. A lot of the public doesn't know that you can only increase the budget by four percent. Right. Oh, sure. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Only people, people that require that work with the budget realize that. Fifteen years ago, we had an all-day referendum that would have increased us over the cap, and it was like, well, when it if it passes, we'll figure that part out then. <laughs> and then we did. And then we didn't. It, it failed. But I'm just saying, like that was a question. It's like, you know, like if you increase your budget by two and a half million dollars. You're going to be increasing your allotment. I don't remember what the number was. I think the cap was at five percent then, but it was like, you know, but you still, we went that. through the whole process, and it was like, well, if it passes, then we'll figure it out. So. That brings up another point related to it in that if you're going to be submitting one of these petitions, perhaps it should be a standardized form available from the town website with an explanation of all the details that are necessary for it. Mm -hmm. So that if you want to start up a petition after the budget has been approved, you know, you need 200 signatures, the, the budget has to be, it has to conform to these guidelines based on the state, it can't go over 4% you can't cause an increase greater than the 4% cap, you know, whatever is necessary to make that legitimate, have that as the explanation based on the signature form that they can download, and then you're getting everything in the same way. 
and everybody has the information that they need in order to do it. Yeah. yeah. We need a statement here, but to your point, that's some kind of, temp, you know, how do I do? Where do I begin? Do I just write anything? You know, mm -hmm. to guide that is would be very helpful to an electoral. want to be getting a, some Dunkin' Donut napkins in with 200 signatures on it, really. I mean. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, we, but we, we want it to be very transparent. You want it to be like a, one of those asterisks with like, you know, two point font on the bottom, except for this, 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 <laughs> the little things on the bottom that, that immediately people be like suspect about the whole, yeah. whole process. And, and it could be nice, plain language. You right. know, this is what you need. These are your steps to raise petition. And then it wants right to, to be so. 250 qualified electors of the town too. Mm -hmm. Well, petitions, those, that would be public record after, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can find, find, actually have some, what, what did they, these other towns, what did they submit? Was there a form? Again, I think we're trying to find that. All right, can we move along a little bit? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Section nine, Office of Personnel and Records. I think we closed that. Um, ben is the Director of Personnel and Records. Um, 6.5, the, the procurement threshold of $10,000. I think we wanted to turn that over to the council to make it a ordinance. <laughs> um, as long as it's not inconsistent with state law, state purchasing uh, laws and so forth. Um, 7.1, number of town council positions, additional districts or at at large for two more options, uh, uh, two more positions. I uh, brought that up for us um, because I I figured that we could uh, uh, wait maybe till next week and hear the difficulty maybe that the board of canvases would have. Like I said, that the the state just finished its redistricting. Uh, some representative districts were um, changed a little bit. Um, you are now in District 28 instead of District 29. Correct. I believe I am. So they moved uh, District 28 to the West Greenwich line. So it got a little bit bigger. Uh, it's probably the biggest one in the state. Just so you know. <laughs> um, Interesting. 1506 membership on declaring vacancies on boards and commissions. That was you. And um, you have the power. And, and actually, you, you only. <clears throat> You only appoint one. No, you have three three powers. Uh, to, it was like auctioneer, town <coughs> sergeant, and and the economic development commission. Uh, was it that one? What was it another one? Citizens. Citizens. So it wasn't a citizens thing. I don't remember what it was that. We don't even yeah. have a citizen citizens advisory right. task force. I think it was called. There isn't one right now. So yeah, yeah. that would be why I'm not thinking of it. Yeah. So let me. Because it's probably not in this. What section was this? 1506. One of the, the this came up because uh, on Monday night the town council did act to terminate the positions of two. Um, absentee members of which commission? Uh, uh, the land trust. And I don't remember what the other one. I don't remember what the other one was, but um, in, in this case, the it was the chairperson of the land trust that had been absent for the last six months, and it says upon recommendation of the chairperson of the board of commission. And if that's your person who you're missing, yeah, I guess they can't have meetings. <laughs> David, <laughs> I mean, they've been having meetings with the vice chair, acting chair. Yeah, but yeah, it, it, I that move. was a limitation. Has anybody reached out to him to see if he moves? Many, or? many, many times. So, okay. so that's another example of where we can make the language a little bit more general. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I agree. And All right. Town Council upon recommendation of the town manager. <laughs> it goes back, and, and, and here it goes back, and it was amended language. It should be a direct 1980 language that says that it, 
that it would take like 72 hours before the next council meeting. I mean, there's some craziness in there. Um, they changed that again after 1987. Uh, new business. Has anybody uh, taken a look at the municipal code chapter 260 fire department? No. Okay. So, have you been following the news at all? Yeah. Um, we might be having a fire department close. And that's problematic. My first question would be to so ben, who is the Department of Public Safety and Welfare head? Who is the who is the director of public safety for the town? That'd be the chief of police. Not you, it's the chief of police. Well, it's me. Uh, so it's not called out under the power the charter it says the manager. Or the manager, or if the manager appoints something. <laughs> so I'd like to find out who that is first. Oh, well, if it's the manager, that's me. And okay. if, it, if it's who I've appointed, it's the chief. Okay. So, um, back in uh, 2013, when this first happened, the uh, town council president, while it was all in court, I was there, I was a representative. Uh, they were going to collapse and they were going to fail without an emergency influx of cash. So, the Town Council at the time uh, voted to give uh, the fire, uh, to, excuse me, loan the fire district $300,000 to carry them to their next um, fiscal year. No, to their next collection of taxes to continue to operate. I came to this meeting and there were probably 100 people in that council chambers yelling and screaming at the town council. So what the town council didn't tell them is that there is a safety valve in this town if a fire district fails. And it is what I just said. <laughs> it is in the code of ordinances or municipal code, I should say, and it's under special acts. So back in 1948, a gentleman by the name of Edward Hudson Sr., who was a Senator at the time, introduced a bill um, just to make sure uh, the town is still covered in case the fire district fails. It this this language in in this is out of the, the, the law book at the state house that I researched way back when. And when we were all going through this problem and we had we had a meeting out in the council chambers and the governor was here and, and the uh, mm -hmm. receiver was here it was Stephen Hartford at the time. Uh, all of the fire district uh, chairpersons, all of the fire chiefs uh, and some representatives and town council members. So it was a huge problem back then. It's gonna get even worse this time. Uh, in May, I saw a note for in May, there's going to be a referendum to pass an eight, 16 point, 16, 8, I think, tax increase. Where do you think that's gonna go? So, uh, they're driving themselves into the ground, uh, short of having the General Assembly take their charter away for not doing their job. We're stuck with it. And like I said, uh, this act is in place. It was adopted by the town. Uh, if, if you read it in your code, it would tell you that uh, a vote shall be taken no later than January 15th of 16th of 1948 at a financial town meeting type thing. There is no record of that financial town meeting being held. Believe me, I looked. Uh, I had the clerk's office look. I went through the town council minutes from 1948 until as far as I could go. Question, is this the state code or the town code? Town code. Town code word, because he said it's an act. It's a state. special act that was adopted <laughs> by the town council I don't know how it is in the code. Which I can't. Is? Yeah, I've been because it's not even in my code. All right, so it's it's chapter two sixty. Article only goes up special acts. Article three. Fire department. POC municipal code chapter two sixty. 
My my municipal code only goes up to two fifty five. It's, it's on the website. It's on the website. It's on the website. Yeah. So take a look at it. Okay. And it's and for the most part, it's almost the identical language <laughs> of this bill. So, um, like I said, the town gave loan them that money to stop triggering to stop this from triggering. So um, the police chief who you appointed as the public safety director has a problem because they could lose fire and rescue service in that fire district. Um, I don't think that anybody else is gonna take up on that. This was, this was, I think, a goal of someone to kill this fire district. And to be honest with you, um, I'm not happy with it because you can't keep playing with people's lives um, with the gamesmanship and brinksmanship. And that's been going on for years with this. A few years ago, Mm -hmm. They came out of they came out of bankruptcy. Uh, they were operating. A certain person who lost her seat for governor came back and won a seat as state representative. And the problem is back. This woman has a mission to destroy public safety in Coventry. She doesn't live in Coventry. Doesn't care. Probably six percent of her voters are in Coventry, and the rest are in West Warwick and Warwick. <clears throat> so this is not going to bode well. To the town. Um, what I did when we had that meeting with the governor back at that time is I provided everyone with a copy of this and I said there is a safety valve. Uh, you should all take a look at it and consider voting for a townwide fire department because you, you, you may not have a choice. It may be foisted upon the town council to do it without voter participation. At the time I was trying to use this to get it out to the people and have the people make a decision about what they want to do with their public safety. Um, again, uh, speaking in court with, with the, the council president giving the money, the town, so one of the town solicitors at the time was pointing out that, that if the fire district fails and the town becomes responsible for it because they're responsible for the public safety of everyone, if the fire district fails, uh, all the other fire districts are going to lose their taxing authority. Yep, just one of them fails. All right. They all lose one their taxing One fire district fails and collapses. The other fire districts have no more taxing authority. The town is forced to create a municipal fire department. And at that time, back in 2013, whatever year it was, I believe it was 2013, I proposed this to get it to the voters. And Magically, I guess the leadership of the General Assembly decided to amend the Fiscal Stability Act to include fire districts. And that's what pretty much saved them and, and really, really annoyed the person that was trying to kill the fire district. So. So you're suggesting we put a question to create one? I'm suggesting that we put a question to the voters about creating a municipal fire department. Uh, in the interim, it may be too late. This 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 would happen. In this the may realm. happen to happen before. That. Right. Yeah. So so if that fire district votes that budget down, which I expect and anybody should expect, because it's beyond the four percent. All right. Are they restricted the same way? Yes, they are. Okay. And that restriction was passed by the very same woman that's trying to kill the fire district. Well, they they can pass up the four percent without voter input. Oh. Okay. If they wanted to. Okay. But anything over it, they definitely need voter input. Okay. So, it's, it's, it's designed, yeah. it's designed to fail. Uh, I think it was, it was designed a couple of votes before were designed to fail. Uh, this spent way too much time in court. Um, so I, I'm going to take the advice of the, of the previous, uh, um, legal counsel for the town, uh, which starts another problem. The same, the same law firm that represents the town represents the Central Coventry Fire District. They can't sit across the table from each other, can they? No. So you have a problem. I'm aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> so this certainly isn't a new problem. Should we? Go ahead. 
should we be looking for a different legal counsel for this issue? Well, at this point, it's not the town's. It's not your problem. Issue. It's going to be. It's going to be on, on May 10th. <clears throat> um, and, and I'll ask our legal counsel, what, what, what can we do to find out whether or not you know, we've got a huge legal issue here because you simply can't have the same firm representing two different things, but the you know, no. across the table. Firms represent lots of different tables. They, they can't be in conflict across the table. Well, they're going to be in conflict. <clears throat> <laughs> and the town has many different legal consultants, mm -hmm. including yeah. <laughs> uh, for special counsel, just for that reason. What so, do you think? So I read the article um, and it struck me that, um, and then I'm sure that the town manager is possibly thinking along the same lines, but I won't speak for him certainly. So Mr. Uh, Attorney D'Agostino asked the town for $3 million. Um, I don't know if the town's going to do that. I'm not asking. It was a president, not, not their legal counsel. Well, the letter was signed by him. Um, so it, it, it came from, him um is the way that i read the letter but um so i would assume that that triggers the town has to answer um that and i don't know who does that answer if it's you then that's one thing if it's if it's a city solicitor or a town solicitor, uh, if, if you're talking about mr dagestine's recent letter he he described the history of what happened uh he didn't he wasn't at the table making the ask so back in January, uh, I met with the president of the fire district, Ms. Fig and Perry, and at that point, they did put in a request for $3 million, which they subsequently withdrew a week later to say, we're going to ask for it from the state instead. So right now, there is no active request from the fire district to the town. Okay. Um, I just... He represents the fire district, and, and that's that's clear from, mm -hmm. from the article. Um, He's part of the same firm that the town may or may not use. If the town uses somebody else, to your point, then that eliminates the conflict. But mm -hmm. if they don't, it's like sitting across the table from your boss and saying, you know, like, who's gonna who's gonna win here? Um, so it's a conflict. It is if that's the question that you're asking me. Where you go for that answer um, depends on how this gets triggered. If it it could be a moot point. It, it, depending on how things play out, or I would say we'd have to go to the business calendar potentially, or um, the ethics commission uh, possibly uh, to to look at that. Okay. So it's a sticky wicket. Um, like I said, this bothers me because uh, I I cannot for the life of me understand. Why someone would attack uh, first response is it's beyond reality. So it's coming. And like I said, my, my thought was to uh, use this to get a question to the voters uh, to create a to create a municipal fire department and I give them the chance to vote on it, but they may not get that chance. That concerns me. So. Um, You're saying it's maybe, for, maybe forced before exactly. this can get approved. The town council may be forced to do something uh, without voter participation, which will only upset the voting public even more. Questions? I, th this is a thought that I actually was thinking of more generally not related to this, but do we have to wait till November to put questions to the voters? Because we have a budget referendum that's open to the same electorate in June. Is there any chance we could- The budget referendum isn't considered an election. And, and this is not. Okay. I think it needs to be on a um, general election ballot. Okay. Not a special type thing. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to think of time-wise. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm throwing out yeah. there. But but I think it's going to be a problem unless the state steps in. Um, they're well aware of what's going on. Uh, the governor's taking a look at it and 
we'll see what happens. But I don't see, I don't see the state giving them three million dollars when they when they can't run their own business. Um, so they blame they're blaming it on an overtime law. But there were two other fire departments that addressed that overtime law three years ago with their respective uh, unions, so to speak, to mitigate, the either, problem, yeah, mitigate it, you know, concessions, this, that, and the whole nine yards. Instead of waiting till the last day and asking for $3 million, you're not doing your job. So, you know, I, I've had to deal too much with this, you know, through the years, and, and I used to not sleep nights because of it. Because Central Coventry is primarily and was in my district. So, you know, they, they, there's always blame going on something. They blame it on blaming it on. on well, the on a first law. time around, it was all about an accounting error. Correct. Yeah, it was. It was someone had an extra zero in a property value, and they were expecting a lot more. That's what. That's what it was. Yeah. But it, but it got changed over by someone who changed the narrative to it. It know, became be a lucrative became, contract for the firefighters. Blah 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 blah. It's the same you group know? of people that moved to a three platoon system to save money. They ran up this deficit, and now they got to move back to the fourth platoon system to save money. And they need the three million dollars to do it. Yeah, it was an interesting read on the overtime. Yeah. And the platoon system, and the ever since they moved here in 2014, it's been nonstop problems. Any suggestions or thoughts? What do you want to just let everything collapse? I mean, the the idea that you have, I mean, from a charter perspective, from a ballot question perspective, which to your point may be too late, yeah. is that budget shifts into that becomes part of the city budget essentially. I mean, right now it's separately taxed, right? We all have our district and we give them our checks. And I'm not sure what what the, the combined a fire rescue budget is for the town, but I would assume it's upwards of $10 million. Well, that's what I, off the top of my head, that's what I keep up, about $10 million. When, when we were discussing this back years ago, I think it was 9.2 million. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sure that it's up over 10 now. Is that just for Central Coventry? No, that's for the entire town. All four, so put all four together. I'm actually surprised it's that. Well. I was a treasury the history in the Central. There were some mergers over time. When I was in high school, there were seven, right. and then four of them consolidated, consolidated into Central. Mm -hmm. And that was supposed to save money, but I hear that it didn't. You always think there's some economies of scale, um, yeah. administratively, at least <clears throat> at a minimum. I think there was definitely a cost savings there, uh, because they, after that merger, they did it with a much larger fire department. They had more adequate personnel. Um, with the combined budget of what they had previously. So there was definitely a copy of safety. This time I four chiefs, you had one chief. Yeah, but then there was the accounting error. Yeah. That yeah. led to issues. And then this just been, and then just been a whole regime that that's caused issues since. So they've been operating um, this board, I believe, uh, by selling off property to, to pay their bills. So uh, they sold, uh, I think the Hill Farm Fire Station was the first one to go. Got sold at nine in the morning and to someone that got resold at two o'clock in the afternoon for a huge profit. A little bit of inside deal there. May as well be honest with you. And they sold the Harris Fire Department, Bill's Pizza Board, that he was going to do something with it. And then he thought about knocking it down to make more parking for his pizza parlor, but it's on the National Historic Register. So that's not going to happen. And then recently, the Washington Fire Station was sold. Uh, I'm not sure if it's before or after. Uh, the new group was put on uh, either by the taxpayers or the, or the potential person purchaser. Um, but I followed I followed some of the meeting minutes from uh, th their meetings. Uh, it sold for three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars, uh, and and it's got a sign on it uh, of a guy uh, that's on the board of directors. So there's a lot of strange things that happen um, with certain. And I think uh, I think that, that that there's going to be a fan that's going to meet something pretty soon. But but so. if, if the time is right, from the charter com, charters commission point of view, to do a ballot question, if if the time is right, if if it makes sense, it's a good idea. Personally, I think if we voted and the council passed and you know the resolution to put this to the voters, uh, it's their decision. 
Uh, right now, I, I, I'm not sure, but I think that they would trigger fiscal stability again. The state will step in and maybe the state will do the work that this district board simply doesn't want to. <clears throat> so I still think there is all that said, something could happen drastically over the next few weeks, months, and you know, it's going to take its own course. But things could potentially work out, you know. So I still think this commission should have a longer term vision of, of considering what we can do longer term. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, and if we look at our ch the charter, so outside the ordinance, the charter only addresses the fire department section 12.02. Real simple, where the Department of Public Safety and Welfare shall be responsible for in bullet point C is control the town activities related to firefighting, fire prevention, and other public safety functions that the town may engage in and other such other rescue and safety programs that the town may be engaged in. So it's pretty broad. Um, but I'd be interested in discussing like setting a hard date in the shot in which the town takes full responsibility for the for the fire protection and, re and replacement of the districts. Um, and maybe that's an 18 month window, maybe it's 25 or not. And it would give them time to fix their stuff and, yeah. and the other fire districts to prepare themselves for it. Yeah. Because there, there's property, there's, there's that, all that stuff has to be carried over. Uh, had that fire district liquidated back in 2013 before the town stepped in, um, the, the taxpayers of that district could have faced up to $22 million of debt that they would have to pay. So it's, it's an interesting and, and pretty scary subject. So, so important. I mean, just, just the stories are probably countless, but you know, my neighbor had a heart attack. They had trouble finding my street because the street sign wasn't visible. I went back and there's a little dark area, but online. They need to get there. They need to be close. They need to be there on time. All this going on is just super concerning. Yeah, this is, this, this would make it not so good. And we also need good talent too. Like the town's known for really good teachers. I can speak back in the day. We had excellent firefighters. Um, we've seen such a mass exodus of talent from this town in the last five years. Um, losing so many of us seasoned, experienced firefighters and EMTs to our, our neighboring towns. Um, it's kind of been a brain drain. So we pay to train them and then they leave to go somewhere else. Yeah. Time to stop that. It's been a re retaining good talent's been very difficult. So yeah. I, if I were you, I would brush up on, on my. Central Coventry Fire District issue that started in 2013. You can probably Google it and you'll probably read all kinds of articles and you'll, you know, you'll you'll probably read some court testimony if you want to. It's, I think it was Kevin, I think it was uh, Gerard Bouchard work the rest of the Central Coventry Fire District was in the court docket. Um, it's a problem. So brush up on it and, and weigh it, some of your decisions. So um and if nobody has anything else to say i'll open it up to public comment and we have some public it was nice to hang in there so there's a hand there oh john go ahead hi everybody uh it's john pasqua 222 raccoon run road coventry uh, first, I just want to uh, I want to thank the commission for giving me the time to uh, speak to all of you, and I appreciate all of you even uh, putting this situation on your radar. I recognize that the uh, the Charter Review Commission is limited, unfortunately, to long term solutions just because of the prescribed process that you guys have. But um, you know, and this is a problem as. Uh, as uh, Mr. Guthrie was was saying, that it's rapidly approaching, and so um, you know, as a as a current lieutenant on on Anthony right now, uh, been in the town. I, I started in the town as a volunteer, uh, God, twenty years ago, and I've been career now for twelve in the town. So I, I've kind of seen the the whole chain of events from when we were a bunch of little fire districts to the Coventry Fire and Rescue Alliance, all the way through to where we are today with this you know, turbulent ride we've been on. But um, as uh, Mr. Guthrie was saying, he, he's 100% he's correct. There's a, there's a big problem looming very rapidly. And the, um, the effects, unfortunately, are gonna be far reaching. Uh, you know, and there's some of the things that a lot of us are not thinking about, like if God forbid we lose a central Coventry 
in, in say 12 weeks from now, there are things that you have to consider like places that hold liquor licenses that have a requirement to have fire and rescue protection. You're not gonna be able to put these people in these buildings without it because you won't have a fire department. You can't say you're gonna be covered by Anthony. You can't say you're gonna be covered by Hopkins Hill or West, or, or West Warwick or Western Coventry or whatever because they don't belong to Central Coventry. And, and, and one of the tactics we use in the fire service is called mutual aid. And, and the description of that is in the name, mutual aid. So if you don't have a fire department to return the favor and to return the expensive response, there's really no obligation for the other department to, to, to come and, and, and respond to your calls. So these are some of the, the serious things that we're, you know, we're looking at right now. And, and I can tell you at the Anthony department, we're half the manpower that we were even six years ago. We're down 50% because of budget cuts. Back when this was happening, we had 16 members. Today we have eight. We cross man an entire department with two firefighters. When that rescues out, there's nobody to take a fire truck. And Central Coventry has seen the same type of reduction over the past few years too. I mean, they went from five fire stations central to down to two. So it's a significant, significant and severe problem. <clears throat> and the solution, there is only one solution. The, the solution is a one fire department, whether it's a district or a town department, needs to be, <clears throat> remains to be seen. It, could it be a district first informed and built and then taken over by the town? Could it be a town department right off the bat? Could it be a district and be that way forever? These things have to be looked at for sure. But without, without a doubt, the only solution to this problem is one department. And, and one thing you have to understand with, 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 the, with these fire districts is the town of Coventry operates as a single fire department. We protect almost 40,000 people over 62 square miles. And, and we're one of the busiest departments in the state. I think we cleared 8,000 calls last year. And so because we're, we're, we're so busy and we operate with a chemical plant in town, many money multifamily structures, a lot of high hazards, we operate as one department. And when you have one department like Central or, or Anthony or Hopkins Hill or any, any one of them that are understaffed or the budget's upset or they're collapsing, it upsets the entire town because we're operating as one already. So I, I agree with, 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 the, uh, with Scott's uh, idea, Mr. Guthrie's idea that we have to put something on the, um, on the ballot. And I can tell you that if any of you spend any time on social media or make your way around town, uh, you would hear a resounding yes when you talk about having one town fire department. If you mention it online, it's the comment with the most likes. It's, it's one of the most supported measures in this town that there is, is having a single fire district. Um, and it's been that way for many years. And, and especially with the people who have been in town for a while and seen this debacle come back and forth. But um, this problem's coming, it's coming quick and uh, something needs to be done. I, I, you know, we, it remains to be seen if the state's gonna step in. The state is really, the state and the, ju the, the judiciary branch, they're both getting their patients wearing thin with the situation. The last time this happened, Judge Stern and Superior Court issued Central Coventry to be liquidated, closed down and liquidated. And that's when the $300,000 loan came out that uh, Mr. Guthrie was talking about. The town council gave it and they, they, uh, they had a lot of people upset, but they gave that loan and they saved Central Coventry, which we were grateful for at the time. And it, it bought some time, but we're back here. And so now we're, we're likely going to be seeing a repeat, but this time we're not, we're probably not going to have as a friendly response as we did last time. Cause like I said, the state's patients are wearing thin and superior courts patients are wearing thin with the situation. So we definitely need to solve this problem. Um, one town fire department is the answer. It's we need to find the way to it for sure. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, my initial, um, I wasn't going to put this on on the agenda uh, until further along, you know, until we got some of the you know the, the council stuff done that they really want. But here we are. This happened. This is happening, and and now you know what do we do? It's going to become a public thing. So two more. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Almagno. 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 
Uh, good evening, uh, members of the commission, uh, Jim and Guthrie. Um, I, I won't take too much of your time. Uh, my name is James L. Magno. I'm a captain at Central Coventry Fire District. I'm actually on duty right now. Um, some of you are in the room I'm familiar with. Some of you I have not met. Um, I will totally stand with, behind everything that Lieutenant Pasqua just relayed to all of you. Um, just to give you a boots on the ground perspective of where we are today, um, some numbers for you to consider and uh, take as food for thought. Um, in the year 2021, the combined districts of Coventry responded to 6,226 calls for service. Um, year to date for 2021, we are at 1,674. The year to date in 2021, on this same date, the calls were 1,335. So a year ago on the exact same date, we were already, we're already 300 plus calls ahead of where we were last year. Central Coventry responds to roughly 80% of that, either within the confines of the Central Coventry district or as aid to our neighboring districts. I will also tell you as I sit here this evening, I have grave concerns about the Western end of town. Right now, there is no transporting rescue service in the Western Coventry Fire District. Let me say that again. There is no transporting rescue service servicing the Western Coventry Fire District right now. As I sit here speaking to you this evening, Central Coventry Engine 7 and Rescue 7 are on first and automatic alarm to any call in that district. So the, the, the premise that if everything goes bad in the next eight to 12 weeks with Central Coventry, the premise that the other districts will be able to handle and maintain that level of service is a pipe dream. This will be a catastrophic event for this town. People's lives are in danger and something has to be done about it. I, I totally agree with what your approach is. Um, and I think you're considering something that is long overdue as far as one department, whether it's a town department or a district department. But it has to happen. I'm not going to get into the whole minutia of how we got here. That's going to be publicized and there's going to be, um, you know, a, a lot of opinions as to how we got here. Any of you sitting on that, in the, on that commission who know me know that I've extended an invitation to all of you to, to contact me for any information that you want. Those of you that don't know me, feel free to reach out. Feel free to come by the station, see the system, which is an outdated, antiquated, archaic system. This, this is not a game. And if this district goes down, people are going to die. There is no way to sugarcoat that. I've worked for this district now 21 years. And this is absolutely frightening what's gonna happen. And, and Chairman Guthrie is absolutely correct. This is all politically motivated. They're pointing at the overtime law as the cause for this. When more information is disclosed and you get the real picture, you'll see that's not the case. This is, this is the fire department that people rely on when they pick up 911. It doesn't have set hours from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. This isn't Cumberland Farms. 
and I'm only taking this opportunity because you're the first public body I've probably had the chance to speak with and have audience with the town manager. So I, I thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Jim, and, and, and I, could, I can hear the concern in your voice. Can I ask some questions? Yes. Uh, Jim, I just want to clarify. You said that currently Central Coventry is first due for everything in Western Coventry. Is that correct? Right now, Engine 7 and Rescue 7 are on at automatic response to Western Coventry, yes. So for Western what reason? No staff. So they're paying a fire tax in Western Coventry with not adequate staff and therefore relying on Central Coventry, which has, has some full-time staffing, <clears throat> but not enough staff to handle your own district. Correct. And, and believe me, this is this is not a swipe at the at the firefighters, the fire chief, or the personnel of the of the Western Coventry Fire District. This they didn't ask for this either. But this is the reality. I, I, I asked that because I, th I think you make the case that currently it sounds like the town is all the fire districts are doing what they have to do to cover the town. But yeah, we have different districts paying different amounts at different district boards. Um, so the things just don't balance out. Correct. It's 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 disparate. It's it, it's disparate taxes for disparate service. It's really, it's what it is. And, and some districts are, are, are paying to send resources to other districts that are paying significantly less. But at the end of the day, that's that's fine because we're, we're all here. The, the people of all the, the the personnel of all the districts are here to serve the, the people of the town in general. Um, you know, John John was absolutely correct in that. Um, you know, a call a call happens in his district in, in the district of Anthony that takes that rescue out of service. Well, Central Coventry is next up, so we'll cover them. But then another call happens, say in Hopkins Hill. Now they're out of service, so you, you end up being left with uh, one engine and one one rescue company to cover the entire town. That's the reality that, that you're dealing with. So I won't take up any any more of your time. Again, the invitation is extended to all of you uh, to reach out, reach out to reach out to the chief. Um, you know, you you want a tour of the station. You want to meet the guys. You want. If, if you want to really meet the boots on the ground, reach out. Thank you, Jim. Um, I'm just yeah. going to add. I'm just going to add one thing. I probably should uh, tell the commission is that uh, when when the problem happened the last time and, and liquidation was nearly there, I I told the council that um, when someone dies, it's going to be the council president's name first on the list of who's going to be sued with the rest of the council people right underneath it because the fire district is not responsible for the public safety of the community. How does that sound? It's written in, it's written in here. So in any event, um, Russell. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thanks for the opportunity to, to speak. I am a board member um, on the Central Coventry Fire District Board. Um, and I'd like to give you some numbers to back up what Lieutenant Pasquale and Captain Al Magno have said. The fire district. Oh. Is... No. For the last five years, the fire district has spent $1.8 million combined just for administration and legal fees. Um, I think that that money would be much better spent on manpower and response as far as fire and EMS service and not being spent um, or overspent, I believe, on management fees. That's an average of $360,000 a year that I believe you know the fire chief and a board or the town manager and the town council could manage much more efficiently than that's being done right now. I do believe the chairman is correct. This is a deliberate effort. I call it fiscal homicide. The board has um, operated and the budget was approved last year with uh, deficit spending. And obviously we can't deficit spend. So come June, we're gonna be out of money uh, without any help or assistance. 
and I do believe it is going to fall on the town. I do believe you guys should put something on the ballot. Um, and I think the choices should either be a municipal fire department or one fire district. Give the people the choice of what they prefer. Um, the current system just is not working. Um, Mr. Stevens brought it up that Western Coventry tonight has no coverage. Um, they are effectively getting the paid department from the Central Coventry Fire District, my $2.19 worth of protection for their $1 and change protection. And um, a level playing field would be one merge, one department, municipal or fire district. I think that's the only way it's going to work out. Uh, to level the playing field for all the taxpayers right there in your room. Everybody's paying different and it should be just one flat fee for everybody who is getting the service from every department in the town. Um, and, I, and I think that's what really should happen. I do believe it's disingenuous to blame the overtime law for this problem. That law was passed in 2019. You're telling me in the last three years, they couldn't have come up with some sort of plan or idea to meet that problem. They simply ignored it. What's also not being told is we are uh, pending uh, litigation. We owe the firefighters $139,000 for a Fair Labor Standards Act violation for um, pay the, for paying them over 56 hours a week. There's a Fair Labor Standards Act that was willingly violated. The Department of Labor, the Federal Department of Labor found out that the district did willfully not follow the law. We owe them 139,000. The fire district is um, denying that and they're fighting it. I'm on the minority, by the way, for that. They're fighting it. So now when it goes to court, it's not $139,000. The district could be liable for double damages and we will be liable to cover the labor cost, I'm sorry, the legal costs of the, of the firefighters union, which I believe right now is somewhere upwards of $50,000. So it's not just a little budget problem. It's a lot of legal issues as well. Thanks. Thank you, Russ. Um, it's kind of hard to believe that potentially this whole town could be covered by Five firefighters, a fire truck and arrested. 64 square miles if central Coventry. Oh, that's impossible. Um, so are they effectively operating as if they're one district right now? Because right now, they, 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 I think that they have like an automatic response now um, just to get enough staffing there, like at a house fire, you know. Call comes in, who's available? Well, I, I think like it's supposed to be this district first, but well, they're already on a call. Okay, well, now we'll call, you know. They, I, I think they're trying to run more like a municipal department. I think that that uh, the chief that is uh, presently running Central Coventry, I think he also was involved in responding to the calls townwide, um, stepping up and trying to, you know, help, you know, help the community. Uh, um, but as Russ said, um, in Western Coventry, they pay, we'll say $1.40. Uh, I pay, I don't know, $3.11 or whatever. They get a fire. You know, my guys are gone. Automatic. So, you know, they should have... I have two guys. Yeah, two guys. <laughs> Where it used to be four. <laughs> but uh, it's a problem, and, and I'd like to thank everybody for their comment. And mm -hmm. is there anybody else up there that has anything that they'd like to uh, speak about? I see a couple of other, a couple of other uh, members of the public out there. So, <clears throat> like I said, I think it's a problem. I hadn't planned on putting this on the agenda because I did not think that, it would, you know, they were going to run into this problem again, which is politically driven. So, any more comment from? Commission members. Just uh, one thing I'd like to add. Um, so I'm a little familiar with the fire service, and as we go through this, we're going to hear a lot of things about mutual aid. You know, mutual aid. We don't have to be fully staffed because we can pull from Westwall, or we can pull from Wall, or we can pull from Situate. Um, I own a business in Providence, and there's multiple times I've seen Coventry fire trucks and rescue going mutual aid to Providence. And so the case in point here is every town and every city is running the staffing game of just being fairly adequately staffed. 
Um, and so with that said, should the town end up staffing a fire department one day, which I think it should, we have to take care of our own first and staff that appropriately and accordingly to protect us because at any given point, we're losing. Yeah. Central Cottage is getting lost to Western Cottage, you know, for calls and so forth, but they're also going to sit you West Warwick Warwick and as far as Providence. Um, it's 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 a serious concern of mine, and I'm just hoping that we can we can hopefully make some headway. And as always, you're all members of the public, so what I mean, I'm glad we brought it up. It's huge. I saw it in the news. It's in the news. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was in the news everywhere when I moved here in 2014. And here we are again. And to, to your point, Mike, you know, there are obviously some standards and based on metrics of what we need. So it, it would be nice to know somewhere out there is, is what we need. And a lot of folks on the phone probably, I don't know where that is. It would also be nice to know, yes, we're in deficit. Yes, we don't have staff. And we're doing everything we can to handle it. You know, It'll be nice to know what do we need instead of just a ballot question we need a <clears throat> town fire department you know what is what is that that'll be nice that must exist somewhere and there's just probably standards with every town and maybe maybe now you you probably know better than i would i've had fire departments in other cities and other states so yeah there's a way to do it there's a way it's done um so the way it's done in rhode island is a little different so okay. uh, <laughs> You know, from a, a manager standpoint, looking at <clears throat> what it would take to uh, solve this problem, um, <clears throat> consolidation is a very attractive and appealing sounding thing. The devil's in the details as always. Um, if you were to consolidate all, all of them together into one, you know, the, the, the typical arguments of well, whose patch are we gonna use, whose chief are we gonna keep, who's on the board, um, mm -hmm. I'd say you'd have to abandon them all and have a, you know, brand new, assuming it's a, a, a town-wide single district that's still independent of the town, a whole new election for a whole new board, selection of a whole new chief, compilation of all new policies, procedures, and they can take best practices. Um, but a, a new district would have to be a new district without any of the baggage and histories following them from the previous districts. That's gonna have its objections and it's gonna have its heartaches. Um, and usually most consolidation efforts fail. Uh, the, the taxpayers will, will revolt because of the difference, the disparities between the different districts and the expectations of what it should cost, what, it, what level of service they should have. Uh, so that's a sticky wicket. Uh, if you were to stand up a town department the one of the, the challenges is under the state law the town cannot increase its tax levy by more than four percent from last year's budget so where are the funds going to come from to add 10 million dollars from the existing four districts in order to run a single department we wouldn't we don't have a mechanism to raise taxes or to provide the service and standing up a department internally is also going to be a concern from a governance standpoint of the town council on behalf of the taxpayers they don't want to assume the bad decisions good decisions or any decisions of what other departments districts may have taken um, they'd want a clean slate started if we're going to start a department well we'd start our own independent one start oh fresh so there will be obvious tensions because then who's going to pay the bill of the old central Coventry fire district well what about the apparatus what about um uh, lease or capital payments or purchase payments uh on bonds and notes and that sort of thing and the code <clears throat> read it uh, I, I looked i did read it while we were sitting here yeah. so uh, there's a lot of maze so not a lot of shells so and, yeah, it's so, still going to be a not obvious. So the reasoning behind my wanting to do this and, and not <laughs> expecting to have to do, get this out so quickly was um, the East Greenwich Fire District um, uh, was absorbed by the um, the town. So they're no longer a district, <clears throat> and they were afraid that a district board could do the same thing in East Greenwich that they did in Central Coventry. So the 
they sent it to the voters. The voters overwhelmingly accepted it. And now uh, there is no more East Greenwich Fire District. It is the town of East Greenwich Fire Department. So this, this is a big issue. And thanks to uh, people like Mr. Hudson Sr., who was a senator, to have the forethought to get something in there to protect the public. Mm -hmm. I never thought in my lifetime that I, I would see a lawmaker trying to, to dismantle public public safety. It's just beyond, it's beyond my comprehension. And if there's no other comments, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We are adjourned. Sorry.